Hey everyone, welcome to the Easy 104 exam preparation series. So starting today my friends, besides giving you the Microsoft documentation for the answer validation for each question, besides that I will also try to explain all the key concepts in all the questions in my own words, giving you examples, use cases and more analogies. And that's why my friends, besides the Microsoft documentation, I will explain all the key concepts in my own words, example, use cases and this will take your cloud understanding to a whole new level and of course fetch good scores in the easy 104 exam. So let's head on to the very first question for today. Here it comes. So here comes the question number 206. The question is about Microsoft Entro ID. Let's read the question. Question says that you have a Microsoft Entro tenant named Contoso.com. Now you want to collaborate with an external partner named the TechBlackboard.com and you plan to invite users in the TechBlackboard.com to the Contoso.com tenant. So please understand that we are talking about the external partner and we want to invite the users from the external partner that is the techblackboard.com to our internal one that is contoso.com tenant. And further it says that you need to ensure that the invitations can be only sent to the techblackboard.com users. So what should you do in the Microsoft Intra Admin Center? Now let's check out the options given here. Options are option A from the cross tenant access settings configure the tenant restriction settings and then we have option B from the cross tenant access settings configure the Microsoft cloud setting and then the option C from the external collaboration setting configure the guest user access restriction setting and lastly option D from the external collaboration setting configure the collaboration restriction settings. Now friends I'm sure that by now you really understand this question talking about Microsoft intro ID. So that is the key concept we need to understand. So let's try to decode what is Microsoft Intro ID because let me tell you one thing. This is a relatively new concept Microsoft Intro ID which was earlier known as Microsoft Azure AD and I've seen a lot of questions coming from Microsoft Intro ID. So really important to understand and here on this documentation firstly you can understand the overview of the Microsoft Intro ID then you can head on to understand the capabilities pricing related products you can also understand other documentation and training and then what are the other FAQs or what are the frequently asked questions that normally people have and yes my friends in the very next episode I'm going to focus questions based on Azure subscription Azure peering Azure keyboard and much more and post this documentation my friends you can head on to the second documentation which is this one what is Microsoft Intro ID and here on this documentation my friends you can really understand who uses Microsoft Intro ID so all the users such as IT admins app developers Microsoft 365 Office 365 or Dynamics CRM online subscribers all are in the Microsoft Intro ID so all basically use Microsoft Intro ID then you can also understand what are the Microsoft Intro ID licenses and all other information is also given and one thing I really want to point out this one here so Microsoft Intro ID has three versions the first one is Microsoft Intro ID free of course whenever you sign into the Microsoft Azure you get the Microsoft Intro ID this version here for free then we have Microsoft Intro ID P1 and Microsoft Intro ID P2. So really understand, read these concepts. You will get a lot of questions around the same. And besides all these documentation, my friends, let me try to explain this concept Microsoft Intro ID in my own words. So first of all, Microsoft Intro ID is a cloud based identity and access management or better known as IAM service that provides a unified platform for managing the users identities and access privileges across various Microsoft products and also non Microsoft applications and services. And as I just said, Microsoft Intro ID was formerly known as Azure Active Directory or Azure ED. Now let me tell you what are the key features and the benefits of Microsoft Intro ID. The first and the foremost is single sign on or SSO. So this one, this this allows the users to sign into the multiple applications with a single set of credentials improving productivity and also reducing the user fatigue to enter or remember multiple passwords. Then we have multi-factor authentication. So this one, this really adds an extra layer of security by requiring the users to provide verification factors, additional verification factors such as they can provide the codes which is sent to their phone numbers or maybe the biometric scan. Then the third one is conditional access and this enables you to enforce specific condition for the access to the resources based on multiple factors. It could be like uh, location, devices 
or user risk level or maybe enhancing security and compliance. And then we have hybrid identity that really supports connecting the on-premises services or the resources. This really allows the organizations to manage their, their identity across both the cloud and the on-premises environments. Moving ahead, of course, Microsoft Intro ID is the source or is the base for user and group management. And additionally, it also provides the base for the external identities and integration with Microsoft 365. And what are the possible use cases for the same? Well, first of all, we have enterprise businesses. Secondly, we have cloud applications. Thirdly, hybrid environment. And last but not the least, developer platforms. So in the summary, Microsoft Entra is a powerful tool for the organizations to manage their access and identity privileges effectively and ensuring security, compliance and productivity. So please read through this documentation to further understand external collaboration setting because this is the next important concept given in the question. You will understand all the given options here. So for example, how to determine the guest user access, how to specify who can invite guests, enable the guest self-service and also block and allow the domains. But let me try to summarize the collaboration restriction in my own words, in a very simple words. So these settings, my friends, these are actually designed specifically to control which external domain can be invited as the guest. And these settings, my friends, they really allow you to specify which domains are allowed or blocked and also ensuring that only the users from the tech blackboard or any other domain for that matter can be invited to the contoso.com tenant. And friends, based on all those documentation on Microsoft Entro ID and collaboration restriction settings, I can tell you the correct answer for this question is option D from the external collaboration setting, configure the collaboration restriction settings. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 207 that says your company has a Microsoft Intro ID tenant named the techblackboard.onmicrosoft.com and it also has a public domain zone for the techblackboard.com. Now you added the custom domain name the techblackboard.com to the Microsoft Intro ID. Now you need to verify that the Azure can verify the domain name, which is the domain name that is the techblackboard.com. What DNS record type should you use? Your options are option A, A, <laughs> that was a good coincidence. Option B, C name, option C, S, O, A, and option D, M, X. So let's try to understand this question a little further down. See, first of all, and listen to this very carefully. When you add a custom domain in Microsoft Azure, you are not allowed to use the domain unless you actually prove that you are the owner of this domain. So that's why my friends, when you add a custom domain in Microsoft Azure, in this question, we are talking about the techblackboard.com. So it could be any domain that you have chosen. So once you have added this custom domain, the Microsoft Azure will force you to prove your ownership of the domain. So that's the key ask of the question. But let me try to explain this question in a different manner or other way. So the other way to understand this question is that every new Microsoft Intro ID tenant that really comes with an initial domain name that is domain name on Microsoft.com that you can see here as well, the techblackboard.onmicrosoft.com. So that's how you start. That's a nomenclature from Microsoft. Once again, domain name dot on Microsoft dot com and you cannot change or delete this initial domain name, but you can always add your company's organizations domain name or custom domain name. And of course, adding these custom domain names, they really help you create the customized usernames that are familiar to your users such as Azure at the rate the techblackboard.com or let me give you the better example or the real time example and that is connect us at the rate the techblackboard.com and just in case you do not know that's our official email ID in case you want to get in touch with us. Now as the question is asking that you want to verify this custom domain name and what are the ways to do it? Well, you can actually verify your custom domain name by using txt or mx record types. And that's why my friends option D MX record type is the correct answer. And with that, let's head on to the question number 208. Very interesting question. And in case you're looking for the PDF files for our exam cram videos for both the Azure and AWS series, for example, AZ 900, DP 900, AI 900, AZ 104, DP 203 or AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. Then you can gain all those PDF files with the questions and the answers. Then for that, please join the community membership or email me at connectus at the rate the techblackboard.com. A different pattern. So in this question, let's read the question first. It says you have a Microsoft Entra tenant and you need to ensure 
that the new Microsoft 365 group is created, the group name is automatically formatted as follows. And the naming convention is department followed by group name. So which three actions should you perform in the sequence in the Microsoft Intra Admin Center? To answer, you have to move the appropriate actions from the list of actions. So basically, these are the actions and arrange them in the correct order. So basically, you have to drag in the real exam. Actually, you have to drag these options, the correct actions in the correct sequence to the answer area. So let me first give you the correct answer and then I will give you the documentation and reasoning behind the same. So first of all, the very first action you need to take is to create a group naming policy. Secondly, you have to set add prefix to the attribute and thirdly, you have to set select type to the department. Now let's try to understand and learn about the groups and the access rights in the Microsoft intro ID. So here on this documentation, this is a lengthy documentation, but let me summarize this page for you. So first of all, in this documentation, my friends, the important key concepts given are first one is group management. So Microsoft intro ID, it allows you to manage the access to the resources and the application using the groups, which really simplifies the user management and also enhances security. Second one, we have group types. So there are basically two group types. First one is security groups and of course these groups are used to manage the access to the shared resources and post that my friends we have Microsoft 365 group which are given here and these Microsoft 365 groups they are actually used for collaboration including shared mailboxes and calendars. And last concept, the last important concept given on this page is user requests. And here you need to understand that the users can request to join the groups and these requests, they can be managed by the user group owners. And what that actually means is that they can actually allow or deny the users. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 209 that says you have a Microsoft intro tenant and you plan to perform a bulk import of the users. You need to ensure that the imported user objects are added automatically as the members of the specific group based on each user department. And this solution must minimize the administrative effort. Which two actions should you prefer? Each correct answer presents the part of the solution. And please note that each correct selection is worth one point. So let's look at what are the options given. Option A, create groups that uses the assigned membership type. Option B, create an Azure resource manager or ARM template. And then we have option C, create groups that uses dynamic user membership type. Option D, write PowerShell script that parses an import file. And then we have option E, create an XML file that contains user information and appropriate attributes. And finally, option F, create a CSV file that contains user information and the appropriate attributes. So let me first tell you what are the two correct actions that you need to perform. First one is option C, create groups that uses dynamic user membership type and then we have option F create a CSV file that contains user information and the appropriate attributes. Now let's understand them better. So coming to the option C. So dynamic groups automatically includes members based on the specified attributes such as department that are evaluated using the rules. And in this kind of scenario, my friends, you really need to create dynamic users and define membership rules based on the department attributes. And what is it going to achieve? Well, this will eliminate the need for the manual assignment or the scripting as the users automatically are added to the appropriate group based on their department. So this was the key ask of the question as well. Here you can read that. And then coming to the option F, here we need to understand that the bulk imports of the users using the Microsoft Intro ID is typically done using the CSV file. And why so? Because CSV file allows you to specify the user attributes, including the department. They will be automatically added to the relevant dynamic groups based on the membership rule that you set. So I hope you understood the question and the answer. Moving on to the next question, question number 210 that says that you sign up for Microsoft Intra ID P2. You remember I mentioned this concept P1, P2 and free tier of Microsoft Intro ID just a while back. So let's read the question further ahead. And further the question says that you need to add a user named admin1 at the rate contoso.com as an administrator on all the computers that will be joined on Intro domain. What should you configure in the Microsoft Intro ID? And your options are option A, device settings from the devices blade. Option B, providers from the MFA server blade. Option C, user settings from the user blades and option D general settings from the groups blade.
and the correct answer for the same is option A device settings from the devices blade and all that can be understood on this documentation that tells you on how to manage the local administrator group on Microsoft Intra joint devices. So please read this documentation to understand how this works. So here you can understand all about the working of the same. You can also understand how to manage administrator roles and how to manage the Microsoft Intra joint devices local administrator role. So all this is given in this documentation to validate the answer. So I hope my friends today's questions gave your mind a good exercise and please do not miss to check out all the documentation in the description box. And also I hope that you do like our new style of presenting the questions in our own words explaining the concepts and also giving the use cases, examples and analogies. And also my friends, please do not miss to watch the previous and the next episodes of this series and also do check out the other series both on Microsoft Azure and Amazon AWS. Please do not miss to watch the other important videos on free certifications, free exam vouchers and also Gen AI. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.